Stephen, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Jesse. Good to talk with you. Definitely. So tell us about yourself. Tell us about your work, your writing. Give us that rundown. Well, I grew up in uh, Las Vegas and uh, graduated from college and Texas Instruments hired me and then TI sent me to Singapore and I ended up living in Singapore for 21 years, working for four different multinationals and then started my own businesses. And uh, when I started my own business, a publisher from the UK came to me and said, I hear you can write a book. And I said, yeah. And so I wrote a book and uh, they published it and went into three, uh, three different prints. And now I've published 21 books. So wow. it's a, a long career. Absolutely. That's amazing. And what type of topics do you write about now? Now it's all leadership. I, it, the first book was on corporate image management and branding and marketing. And then I wrote a series of Asian quotation books, collections of Asian quotes. And now the last four or five books have been on leadership. Awesome. Awesome. So you obviously have tons of experience going from, you know, blank page to final draft, but thinking about maybe your first book when it was the first time you were going through this process, what were some of the struggles you encountered that either stopped you from getting started or really gave you some hurdles as you were getting to that final draft? Oh, wow. Uh, I think in the early days, it was just not having a good outline and uh, just starting to write. And then you know, I actually one time I sent some some text to a friend of mine and he says, uh, it was like first four chapter, he says, ah, I like it, but you've got the same story too in chapter four. And I didn't realize I used the same story twice. <laughs> he says, it's a good story, but it's not worth twice. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Do you have any tips for outlining? Because I know, I mean, outlining is something that everyone talks about, right? It's write an outline, write an outline, write an outline. But do you have any sort of best practices or things that worked well for you in your outlines? I do now, and this is strictly for nonfiction. I can't help anyone with fiction books. They're strictly nonfiction. I have what I call a four by four matrix. So I say, write down what are your four major messages, almost like a suite of cards. So your Jack, King, Queen, Ace, what are your four major messages? And each one of those is a suit. And then under that, write your four supporting messages for each one of those. So now you've got 16, which is roughly 16 chapters. And, you know, a good nonfiction book is about 16 chapters. And that's how I start off. Now, you know, I'll be the first to admit some of the, sometimes it comes out 14 chapters, sometimes it comes out 18 chapters. Things change during the writing process. But that gets me focused and really understanding what my key messages are and how I want to reinforce those key messages. Mm, I love that. I teach a very similar thing. I teach a three by three by three. So just going kind of one layer deep, but I love that structure of kind of a family tree in a sense, because it makes it very clear of what you're going to talk about, what supports what, and really how to convey those messages clearly and concisely for your writing ease, but also for the reader as well. Yeah. And I, and I do it. I mean, the other point of course, is that you just mean you have to do it from the reader standpoint. So what are the, what are the, it might be the four things I think are important to get across, but then the supporting messages are, what does the reader need to hear? What does the reader need to learn? And that supports the, the four key messages of the book. Mm -hmm. Now you said you have most experience with nonfiction. Most of my people are nonfiction. Most of the people that are going to be watching this are nonfiction writers as well. So one of the kind of trends that I see a lot of entrepreneurs fall prey to when they start to write their nonfiction books is they throw a lot of case studies that are basically testimonials into their book. So what sort of tips do you have for kind of striking that balance of like, yes, I've worked with clients and this is their transformation with my method, but also making it sound like a book and not just a collection of testimonials. Yeah. And I think that collection of testimonials comes across too much as I, 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 and after a while, they for the reader, it gets quite boring. So I, I really recommend writing a third person. I, I read so many of those kind of books and it says, well, I did this and I coach this person and I did that. Okay, well, that's your experience and that's a lovely journey, but I'm not learning from it. And if you can turn that into third party and really what the lessons are that you can teach people or coach people from your experience, I think that makes a better book. Mm, that's a great, that's a great piece of advice. Switching direction slightly to kind of more of the mindset things. Were there any key mindset shifts that you had to undergo with any of your books to help you get that final draft done? You know, it was interesting. That's a great question, Jesse, because not the last book, but two books um, ago, I had a deadline and I self-published a lot of my books. Now I have my own imprint. So I had given myself a deadline to come out this book on October the 18th. And I was on an airplane flying uh, across the country and I was doing some editing work. And I literally, I put the, I put it down, I said, crap. 
And this is in like early September. And I went to the hotel and, and spent that evening rereading it again. I, and I just wasn't happy with the flow. And so I thought about it for two days. So I, I just reset my deadline. I gave myself three more weeks. It was a self-imposed deadline. And I thought, you know, if I three weeks, I restructure. And I did. I turned a lot of, you know, stuff from chapter 12 went to chapter nine. Stuff from chapter nine went to 10. And it just, it, it, and then I'm, I'm really proud, proud of it. And that book actually has won a couple of awards too. So I'm pleased about that but I think it flowed better and I think that's what you have to do sometimes you just have to look yourself and say if it's not don't publish because you gave yourself a self-imposed deadline mm -hmm. absolutely I think a lot of people can kind of fall on one side of a deadline where they're either like the world is going to implode if I don't meet this deadline mm -hmm. or they're like well I could do it tomorrow or I could not or you know there's kind of that spectrum there and so it's it's hard that's to not a deadline that, that's not yeah. really a deadline though <laughs> <laughs> three, three weeks, you know, postponing by three weeks, you know, I, I didn't postpone it by three years. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. You know, that graveyard of unfinished manuscripts on so many people's computers. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, now, absolutely. this has been a fantastic conversation. I know you have so much experience because you've written so many books. You've been through that process of, okay, I have an idea and I got to turn it into a book, you know, 21 times. What advice would you give someone that maybe we haven't covered already who is sitting down to write their first book and they are really struggling to get that final draft done? Your job as a writer is to write, write, don't edit in that first draft and, until you've got a lot of, so not, I will admit I do what some editing in the first draft. You know, I have 21 books as experience. If it's your first book, get it on paper, get it on the computer. Don't worry about editing it, get it down and then go back. And I see so many people write the first two chapters, they get, they're editing and they're struggling with it and then and they never get to chapter three, they never get to chapter four. And it's crazy. Just your job is to write, then your job is to edit or go hire an editor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you think that's perfectionism that's creeping in or, or what makes people get stuck in that editing phase? I think it's a little perfectionism, but it's a little bit of just fear. I don't, I wouldn't go through perfectionism anymore, but if it's your first book, it's like, I wonder how people are going to receive this. Even, even though you want to show it to a friend or a spouse or a family member, you keep editing and editing. You want to make it really good because you, you want to be proud of it. But you have to remember, it's a first draft. It is not your final book. If And my advice is don't show it to people until it's in a finished format. I mean, you you can bounce the ideas, talk about it to people. Don't ask people to read your first draft. It's for you. Uh, other than, if you're not going to do the first edit yourself, then the only person who should be reading it is your editor. Mm -hmm. I love that. There's a quote by Terry Pratchett, I think, and he says that the, the first draft is just you telling yourself the story. And I think that's really reassuring for a lot of authors yeah. because it's, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? This isn't no. going to be the one that gets published. And so that takes some pressure no. off your shoulders. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I've never heard Terry's phrase like that, but I would agree with it. Just get it on paper, get it in the computer and get it out of your system. Get it out of your system. That's the key. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I hope I didn't butcher that quote, but it's a really good quote and a great message. But uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Stephen, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks for having me, Jesse, and good luck with your uh, all your other interviews.